Hello again, this is Dolores Cannon with the Metaphysical Hour, and we're ready to go again. This is a live show. You know, after all those weeks of being gone, it was all uh, taped and out of the archives, but tonight it is another live one. I've been back now for a couple couple of weeks. Uh, let me give out the, the uh, toll-free number before we begin. The number is 877-876-5227. Eight seven seven eight seven six five two two seven. In case anyone wants to call in, well, tonight's going to be a kind of an informal show, I guess you would say, because <laughs> when I went off the air last week, uh, Don Newsom is the one who uh, runs BBS Radio, and it's his baby and his dream. And we were talking, and he said, "I want to call you and just visit." Although I don't know how he finds time to work that into his busy schedule. But I said, well, if you just want to visit, why don't we just do it on the air? So he says, okay. So we decided tonight he'll be the guest, and we'll just see what he wants to talk about, and we'll just have a discussion. If anybody wants to jump in, they can call the toll-free number and ask questions then. Okay, Don, you're there now, aren't you? Yes, I am here. It's a pleasure to be here with you. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you. Okay, because that's why I said if you just wanted to visit, we could do it on the air. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we're doing today. Well, I've been uh, with your show now. It's been over two years. Correct. And I think I was one of the first ones, wasn't I? Actually, you were. You were one of the very first um, people that started radio with us. Yeah, when did you start? Just tell them about that. How well, long ago has it been? Well, I guess it depends on what you mean by when you started. I mean, we started the blog. Yeah, when did the dream start? But when, when, when it became a reality and all of that, I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know the world's changing, Dolores, and, and I'm just so happy to be on the air to be working with an enterprise like this, to be working with people like you, because to me, I promise you, Dolores, the world is magical. It really is magical. Reality is magical. And the people that don't see the magic, that don't see that, that fluid nature that's coming about, because it's fluid, it's just it's higher frequency, more space, more, you're sped up. Time yeah. seems to slow down or speed up, actually. It's collapsing. Really, you're speeding up. We're all speeding up. To me, I was, I've always believed that somehow since I've been here that I keep seeing things um, in the past, that I'm living in the past. What do you mean? Well, you can't be living in the now unless you're in the now. And somehow these bodies and this energetic state that we're in means that we keep seeing light after its origin. In other words, light can do something, mm -hmm. and the origin of that won't reach us. We won't even know what happened until the past. In other words, the light doesn't reach us for minutes, days, hours. How can we act then in the future if we're only seeing and feeling things in the past? Okay, that's a good theory. So I think that this evolutionary change that we're going through, and, and it'll be an ongoing one, I think. Well, yes, that's what I'm lecturing about now all over the world, and my new book is all is about that. We're expanding more into it. Sure. Because I'm, uh, I'm getting more and more information about it, and it seems to be, I think more people are becoming aware of it, but there are still those that are just plodding along. They say, looking at the ground, like you said earlier, and they're not moving. You know, that's true. But you, it, to me, they won't be able to help it soon because life is going to move so fast yeah. that it's going to end up being quite chaotic for them it, unless they can somehow put a spiritual understanding to it because I think the, the mental understanding just won't be able to grasp it. That you're, that's right, because, but so many of them aren't even aware that anything is happening. True, true. Uh, yeah, I, you'd have to really be in a fog, uh, Dolores, in the world today if, if you're somehow not maybe finally uh, aware 
or, or conscious of the fact that things have changed so much on you, uh, others in the universe, throughout this planet, throughout the solar system. The reason I say that, because there are changes happening on all levels, and they're massive, massive changes. And I think most people have some sense that things are changing up quickly, and that time seems to be moving faster. Oh, it, I, it definitely is. Right. What my daughter just said today, she said, the weeks are going by too fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's actually, in my opinion, it's really, time is collapsing. It's, it's slowing down, and the rest of us are speeding up to light. Light, to okay. me, is a spectrum. It's the whole spectrum. It's just once it reaches a certain frequency and speed, it becomes light. Yes, and that's what... It's one of the things I'm writing about and lecturing about. That's what we're moving toward. Right. And there's faster speeds than that. But see, I keep calling it the new earth and the new world. And people keep saying, well, when's it going to happen? I said, we're already in the middle of it. We're here. Um, you know, it, it, that ties right into um, a script that I was looking to write. It would, have been, it would actually be the first script I ever wanted to write, but... Um, it went along those lines that we're already there. Uh, I, I truly believe that the world is in, uh, in a new transitional phase and that uh, people are just going to wake up to it. Yeah, because that's what I've found. We can't stay the way we were. The old world is just uh, its fading away because of all the negativity and what we're doing to the environment and the world. It just couldn't keep on, so that's why we have to move into a new earth. And our bodies have to speed up to reach it, because the what I have is that by going into the new... Well, I wasn't going to talk about this tonight, <laughs> but it's all in the new book, and it's in my Convoluted Universe book two, and I'm expanding in book three because there's so much information. But the idea is that the entire world is uh, shifting into another dimension, it's speeding up its vibration and its frequency to do this. And I've been told that it's the first time in the history of the universe that anything like this has happened, that an entire planet will shift into another dimension. And they said it's the greatest show on Earth, and all the other beings and everything are watching because they want to see what's going to happen. <laughs> you know, I think that because of the way this melting pot is here in this location, this uh, orientation of space-time. Yeah. And uh, I actually believe that you're right, that I think that we, through all the spiritual aspects that we are, because we are one, really have come together to make a magical, new uh, evolutionary ascension process where everybody gets to move along together. That really is unifying. Of course, there's going to be those that are going to choose not to, and, and that's their wish. And that they said, that's, they said that's fine because everybody has free will and they all have their own choice. Right. The, the magic is going to pass them by. In fact, their perceptions won't even see them. But they it, also said in order to make this shift, see, our own bodies have to change vibration and frequency, become lighter so that we go with it. Uh, I don't think... I don't think there's much choice there. Uh, I think with the earth changing its vibration, I think that we're all naturally um, changing with it. Yeah, but there are some that won't. True, I agree. Those are the, those are the ones that are in you know, the, name, the negative. And that's what I've been saying in my lectures. It goes along right with the Bible in Revelation where it talks about those left behind. Yeah, well, it's going to happen. The, the vibrations of all of us are changing. Those who are deciding that, they, that they're totally against it or do not want to go along, yeah, I, you know, it is sad. Again, that always saddens me because I can't understand it anymore. And yeah, they'll stay with the old earth. They will. The one that's having all the chaos and the, yeah. all the uh, earthquakes and the... Sure, they won't perceive the new earth the way it is. They, they won't be living in that energetic space. Well, what I, in my book, it says they will stay with what they have created. Correct. I believe that. The negativity. I believe that. And they don't even realize anything is going on. But it's their choice. And they said eventually everybody will get there, so it doesn't make any difference. It's just that some will get there sooner than the others. And that by changing our frequency of vibration, 
Oh, they said the new earth is going to be so wonderful and so beautiful that I don't know why anybody wouldn't want to shift into that. And to, you know, to leave the negativity with the old earth. Yes. Yes. But uh, I ask people in my lectures, I say, don't you notice anything happening to your body? Because I get so many people who are having physical effects from the changing of the vibrations. Oh, they're profound. Yeah, you know, they're, they're going, profound. They're going to the doctors, and the doctors don't, can't find anything wrong with them. And all it is is the body is reacting as it's shifting. Because they said you can't uh, shift all at once. It would be too traumatic for the Bible. It can't for the Bible. <laughs> I mean, for the body. <laughs> Where did I get that? <laughs> it's not uh, too, too traumatic for the body. It can't handle all of it moving into this other energy all at once. So it has to be done in stages gradually. I, I see. I agree. And I, I agree. And it's been happening for about the last three or four years. I agree with that. And your body will change frequency and vibration. And then it will level off, and it'll wait a few months or so, then it'll do it again. But every time it does this, you have physical effects. And they say the older people are the ones that are experiencing it the most. They're feeling it the most. The ones in the middle are not having quite so severe of effects. Of course, the younger ones and the teenagers, and those they came in with everything already in place. Their DNA has already been changed. The vibration and frequency has already been changed. So they are not feeling it near like the other people. But the older ones, and I'm talking like 40, 50, and on up, they're talking about they have, uh, let me see, they're saying uh, heart palpitations, high blood pressure, uh, dizziness, depression, body aches and pains, joint pains, muscle aches, those kind of things as the body adjusts to the new frequency. And they go to the doctors, and the doctors can't find anything wrong. Yep. You know, well, the, I'll tell you what. Your, med, your yeah. medical mafia will take a pill. Well, the doctor, yeah, I was going to say, the doctor's going to sure. give them some medicine. Anyway. Somebody will find something wrong with you, folks. Yeah, they'll say, I'll, they'll give them some medicine anyhow because they don't want to admit they can't figure it out. Oh, exactly. Well, they don't want to figure it out, and they don't really care, and some of them are actually neurotic enough to, uh, you know, go ahead and charge you not really caring, just feed you a pill. I promise you they're out there. Oh, yeah, I know. Psychologists, um, a lot of them will do that. You know, it's interesting. They'll, they'll feed you a pill after f five, ten minutes of getting to know you. They'll just diagnose you, and bam, here's a pill. Try this. Check it out. <laughs> if it's not right, we'll change the... Uh, well, maybe we'll change the um, subs uh, prescription or maybe the, uh, uh, the milligram, the dosage, but uh, they'll always figure out a pill to give you. And if nothing else, they'll want to operate. Oh, yeah. You know. Absolutely. I, I understand that because I work with a lot of doctors, and I know a lot of Gray's them. Anatomy does a pretty good show on how wanting and willing these people are to catch up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I keep trying to tell people. You make yourself sick, and if you understand that your mind is powerful enough to make yourself sick, you can also cure yourself, because they tell me that the body is such a remarkable machine, it can heal itself if you work with it. Yes, I believe the mind is the great, the great uh, creator, builder, and yes. I think that it really builds the body the way uh, you want it to be. Oh, you do have a collar. Because, see, I see you, thousands, wanna, you do have a caller, sorry. <laughs> I see thousands and thousands of clients, and they come in to me with my office, and they'll tell me about the different aches and pains in their body. Right, right. And I can usually tell them right off what's happening in their life because the subconscious is so literal about what part of the body it affects. Right. When it's trying to tell you something. Right. And these people don't understand they're doing this to themselves. And, you know, the doctor isn't going to take the time to find out what's going on in your life. What, what are kind of stress are you under? What kind of family life is going on? What's your work situation? They don't even bother to ask you. Yeah, anymore. well, they don't care. Really. They you know, really don't care. You're in there five minutes, you know, here, you know, here's a pill or something. Here's a pill. Yep. Instead of trying to figure out that what's your, what's your symptoms are caused by is your 
Oh, try but, to get a DWI. Go to a psychologist. You'll. Uh, I'll tell you three things that will probably happen, but you do have a caller. They are on the line with us. Oh, but, good. But the three things that would happen would be, first, you'd go to the psychologist. You'd yeah, speak to I, I work with the subconscious. Yeah, and they'd speak with you a few minutes. Then if you're, you know, a drug addict or an alcoholic or something, they're, of course, going to prescribe you something. Yeah. They'll do it anyways. I mean, just take 100% of the time to prescribe you something. Um, so if you, if you go to a psychologist, more often than not, they're going to give you a bipolar uh, or some mental disorder disease yeah. um, profile, and they're going to fill you up. Or they'll put you on antidepressants. <laughs> you know, they love to put you on antidepressants. And that's yeah. what I do is try to get people off of the antidepressants. Yeah, yeah. They really are. It really is a medical mafia. It really is. Uh, Dr. Carley says that quite uh, but I work with this a lot, and you know I get so many clients coming from everywhere. But uh, that's important to know. We do run; we can control our bodies. I agree. And things are changing because we are moving into this new world, and it's affecting us a great deal. Uh, you said you have a color, but let me ask you just one thing here before sure. we go into that. Uh, also, I ask people if they've noticed their diets are changing. Because they say in order to make the shift into the new world, we have to become lighter. Yep. This means you have to eat different kinds of food. And less of it. If you're getting away from heavy meats, anything that's going to hold you down. Right. They said the best food is live foods, which is fresh fruits and vegetables. And, uh, you know, things like that. And they said eventually we're going to get to where it's in a liquid diet. But it's much better if we can just eat small meals during the day and not one big one. I agree. In fact, I don't even like to eat. Uh, it's almost the it's the one thing that I find is a chore in my life. <laughs> well, they call it grazing. They say just eat small meals all during the day. Don't put a load on your body. Right. And it'll be much better because it is changing and shifting in consistency. They said the cells have to get new information, and they're doing it constantly. And the doctors are going by what they were taught, and they said everything is changing too fast. And the cells are receiving new information, so they don't understand this at all. Yeah, uh, I know. That's why, folks, it's really within. You'll you'll find the answers if you go within. I mean, it may take a while, but they'll come. Yeah. Yeah. Because you got to find the. But that's what I've found. If you don't find the cause, all the operations and the medicine isn't going to help you. Yeah, it's that's going right. to come back. It's going to spread to other parts. That's of right. Body. Uh, you haven't found the cause. That's right. It'll come back some other way. It'll meet you. It will. <laughs> and this is what, you know, but the ones I work with, I spend a lot of time talking to them so we can try to get people to understand these things. Okay, you said you got somebody online? Uh, yes, uh, you do have a caller. Okay, let's see what they want to talk about. Caller, are yes, you there? Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, hi, Dolores. Hi, Don. Uh, just a couple quick comments. My name's Jim. Um, I heard an interesting quote today that kind of ties in to, to what you're saying tonight. It, it went like, um, uh, our, the universe weighs three pounds and so does our brains. So when we change our brains, we change the universe when we change our thoughts. So, so uh, I, I feel like that's what I'm trying to do is just turn off the negative uh, news and everything. And, yeah. Don, you always have... Don, your your guests and, and so on are so positive. You know, some of these other internet stations they try to do a lot of fear mongering and 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 scare people, like yeah. Alex Jones and so on. So oh, it's yes. very very important that we keep the moral high ground in the, in this time that we're in, not to not to get sucked into these kind of uh, um, you well, know. I would, yeah, I would ahead. agree. I would agree. Although. I wouldn't really put it as moral high ground. I would almost have to say is, you know, work with integrity. You, you know, the moral high ground to me, even the use of that, like, uh, you know, Bush constantly loves to use that term. But to me, it's really a matter of just falling in love with creation once again. Uh -huh. Falling in love with it. 
Look, you, you can't turn a new leaf like you're turning right now. The universe doesn't do this every time you come to it. This is spectacular, and you can actually, you know, close your chapter on an old book and open up a new one. So you learn to love creation and, and learn to really remove the fears. Of course, it's important that we pay attention to what's going on, but to stand aloof from it and know we're beyond it and to help everyone around us and those who are caught up in that muck and mire to really see through it, see it for what it is and see themselves for who they are. And then you can really start to love creation. And that's what I think it's coming back to. And, and what a profound time to do it. See, that's what they keep saying. They said fear is the strongest emotion that a human has. And, of course, it's going to hold you back. And they said if you get caught up in the fear, you watch the TV, and you believe a lot of these things that they're, they're promoting, they're trying to scare people and control them. They said you've got to think for yourself and not get into the fear. Because they said there's two things we have to get rid of if we're going to move into the new world and not, not be staying behind in the old world. One is fear. You've got to release all fear, and you also have to get rid of karma. You can't move on without getting rid of the karma because that holds you back and makes you keep returning in the cycle. So they said those two things you have to get rid of. But fear is a very strong emotion, and uh, love is what it's all about. And I know, you know, that's been told since back in the time of Jesus. That's what he was trying to tell people. Absolutely. Understood. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and also, Dolores, your show last week just absolutely blew me away, the way you explained everything, how the aliens are helping us transcend and, and so on. That, I, I, that really blew me away. And one last thing, I've been on a liquid diet for almost a week. Um, and I I'm literally feel so much better. You do, uh, don't you? Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot yep. of hemp protein, uh, raw yep. honey, uh, hemp oil, yep. um, everything in a blender. Don't juice. Get the fiber too, and that's it. Just fresh oh. vegetables and fruits. You know, Mr. Juice Man was on our program. You know, the the older gentleman that you see a lot on your uh, TV commercials, Mads, or used yeah, to. Yeah, I met. Uh, yeah, I met him at Birdine's one. Yeah, he was on the program not too long ago. You know, I'll tell you, juicing is the way to live, strong, yeah. Yeah, but just get a two-horsepower blender or the best blender and just sure. blend everything. You don't have to, like, you exactly. know, you don't have to mess with the juice machine. I so, agree. Yeah. Well, see, that's what I do every every morning. I make a smoothie, and I have all kinds of fruit, and, and I, put in, uh, I put in a yogurt and a raw egg and... Oh, you know, honey, and I've got all of my vitamins and minerals and everything goes into that. And I've been doing that for years, and I don't get sick, I don't hurt, and you know I travel all over the world. And so I really believe it, it goes back to that. It's getting away from the heavy stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. And hemp is just a great source of protein. Stay away from the soy and the whey, and you get everything in the hemp. It's just a, it's such an on used food and so like it's so valuable it would solve all the world hunger problems when you think of it yes, how, they, how they've suppressed that uh information well so, they said it's okay to eat some meat but not to go overboard not to eat heavy stuff i'm talking and hemp and not the big meals because they said it's much easier on the body to not make it work so hard yeah, absolutely. So if people can just start fasting and detoxing and, and light meals and fresh, fresh, it comes down to fresh, you know, we are living cells, so we have to eat fresh too. And you, your body will, will in tune and just, you'll have so much more energy and your mind gets so much more clear and you're more focused. All the noise and nonsense around you, you just like zone out and you're just so much more at peace with yourself. So you you folks have a great holiday and thank you for the great information. Keep it up. Oh, okay. <laughs> what a beautiful caller. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now, I was listening last week because I never know. I'm sitting here talking to the wall and I never know if anybody's out there. <laughs> you know, I think many shows are like that. It's you know, when you have a regular show, people just tune in and they don't want to be interruptive or call or or yeah. interrupt the flow, or or it just isn't the kind of program for calls. They'd rather pay attention. You know, there are so many programs I'll just sit back and just pay attention. I wouldn't dream. I mean, I have a million questions. I just wouldn't dream of calling to interrupt their flow. Some programs are like that. I mean, you're you're the monologue specialist. 
you 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 could actually monologue with the best of uh, infinity. Well, I <laughs> all I do is push a button and go into my lecture mode. No, it's <laughs> fabulous. Well, you have so much to say. Well, you know, there's uh, that's one thing with uh, I go to all these conferences because. Some people only have one book and one subject, but I've written 14 books, and I've got so many things I can talk sure. about, so I can go to all these different conferences. But usually I have to speak for three hours at a stretch, so, you know, you just get in the habit of doing it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but even when I was in Australia, people said over there, they listened to the program, and a lot of people have told me they don't want to interrupt, they just rather listen. So I guess there are people out there. I always wonder. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're out there. They're tuning in. Okay. But this part about the new earth, it seems like to me it's urgent that they want me to keep telling people about it. And uh, it is the answer. You know, love is the answer. But I know a lot of people, they get tired of hearing that and they think it's you're talking about church stuff. And it's not that at all. This is a whole different thing. Love is such a strong vibration. Oh, I agree. You know, you know, they brainwashed us in this country, and, and we brainwash ourselves by going along with it, and eventually you're in a matrix. The one quick, fast way out of that matrix, even if you're in one, you might not even know you're in one or don't even know how many are around you or how many you've created and how many are created with you um, and where you're at in that game. But one surefire bet to get out of it is just constantly retrain yourself yeah. by convincing, really convincing yourself in your meditations is, I'm love. I am love. And you just repeat it, and you go into your highest meditations that way, and eventually you'll start to begin to understand the truth of it. And, you know, there's so many people in fear, and I try to tell them, you draw to you what you are afraid. You give it energy, and you attract it to you. Sure. You give it life. If you don't focus on it, you won't attract it to you. Yeah, they need they need really your energy. They need to control, manipulate your energy. That's the type of energy that is. Yeah. And if you don't give it anything, it just can't be. Yes, it can't exist. And it's the same way as people, you know, you they have a term for them. They're called psychic vampires. I don't like that name, but, but they exist. Some people that their energy is so low they have to have energy, and they feed off those who have higher energy. Sure. Well, there's people here on this earth that we call psychic uh, vampires because they really are engaged I in mean, illicit mind um, mind manipulation methods from remote locations based on groups of people really to um, mind screw people. Uh, I'm telling you, folks, they're out there. There's groups of them. And most of them work for illicit portions of your government. And it's a shame. And they know what, well, I don't know. Maybe they're not aware. You know, when you go down that rabbit hole, when you take the, the psychedelic uh, purple pill instead of the red pill or the green one, you might go their direction. And that's, that's a direction where it shuts down your free will. And, or let's call it the gray pill. I don't know. But it, it, it certainly closes you off to the reality of things. And uh, it, it, it focuses you more on the mental aspect. It takes you into a realm that doesn't lead you where you really, truly want to go. I know, and you just go round and round on the wheel of karma, and you don't get out of it. You're stuck with the old earth. But those people that I call psychic vampires who have such a low energy, they aren't even aware that they're doing this. But they need energy, and we can feel it sometimes. You'll feel people... You know, somebody can come into your home, and when they leave, you just feel totally drained. Drained. And you even meet them in stores and things. It's because they, they are pulling your energy without even realizing it. True. And, True. Uh, well, I've been told we have to put up shields to protect us against those kind of people because they are attracted to those of higher energy. Well, yeah. you know, to me, I almost have to say that if they need my love, i got lots to give. Take it all. Okay. I, got, I, I have infinite amounts, and if they need to drain me, keep going, because i got lots of it where that came from, and infinitely more if they want it. Okay, as long as they don't deplete you. That's the thing. Well, I don't know how that's possible. Again, it's a matter of perception, attitude, perception. Yeah. Uh, it really boils down to you are the greatest. You are it, all that, and more. 
And when you finally connect belief with reality, then you'll know it. Because, but that takes action. It takes walking it. And when you're there, you, and you'll continue to grow in that respect. It's, it's an infinite world we live in, and nothing can rob you. And you're always either giving love or you're asking for it. Well, see, uh, it does no harm to talk nice to anybody you meet, you know, the clerk in the store, oh, the garbage man, the janitor, and they it might make their day just by saying a few nice words. Sure. If they need it, I, again, they're always giving love or asking for it, too. Energies are really always doing one of two things, giving, giving love or asking for it. You know, now, a lot of them in the taking situation, we're not, we're not going there. But yeah. the people you meet, they might be asking for it. You know, so give it to them. Mm -hmm. But it does no harm to smile at somebody and say a nice word to someone. I agree. And that's what it's all about, is appreciating every individual. And uh, I, you, you never know their story, because I hear so many stories in my work. You never know where they're <laughs> coming from. That's right. And you have to appreciate that human being that's inside there anyway. But um, hmm. anyway, this is, <laughs> oh, I work so much with this. And it's amazing to me the way people can make themselves sick. They, get re they, even, uh, they have operations and things because they don't realize there, a lot of it comes from holding anger inside and resentment and not allowing, not letting it go. Sure. That doesn't mean about getting rid of the karma. You have to get rid of it. I agree. And, the, and the fa again, the fastest way to do that is just to know your love and act accordingly. It's responsible and it will give you a new meaning on life. You know, I don't advocate, of course, not going to doctors at all or anything like that. I mean, there, there are situations that call for drastic measures. Yeah. But in the in the in the world we live in today, you know, if you're casually going to the doctor because of casual things or things you don't quite yet understand, well, that's your choice. I won't say don't do that, but I would often say consider all aspects, get other opinions, and make decisions based on you know a little more input. Yeah. Well, see, I'm always encouraging people to seek out the natural remedies, the alternatives. I think you know, they the should. The naturopaths, the homeopaths. Sure, absolutely. Way. There's a lot of other ways you can go besides the medical with the drugs. That well, have they opened up anywhere in all your travels some form of uh, a building that may be built in some uh shape like a pyramid or octagon or whatever the case is, or maybe just a straight oval building, dome building, square building that really has all the various forms of Eastern and Western type medicines in one location. Have I found it? Yeah. I mean, do they even exist? Oh, I found different shapes and things, but uh, you mean all in one place? Sure. I you know, you have like these 20 different types of different holistic, natural, and then you have uh, healers, and then you have Reiki healers, energy healers, but you also have surgeons and uh, pediatricians, and, and I mean the whole gambit of science and spirituality and all of them meeting together as to work in harmony. Have you ever run across that yet? Well, see, I'm working with a group of doctors in Moscow. I thought I, I've mentioned it on my show several times, and they are trying to unite the healers of the world. They're definitely, their whole organization is going toward the natural healing. And really? The home remedies. And so they are definitely, uh, they're trying to unite all of the natural. I love it. The herbalists, and they said, we don't want any fakes. We want the real things. I love it. So... I mean, have you been traveling Russia a bit? I mean, is it uh, obviously our news is painting a pretty severe picture of what's going on over there? And I and I think, of course, everything that the news portends or says, I find will be or is plainly false. Um, so we uh, literally we get a lot of news that uh, talks about the evils of Russia and what's going on and. <laughs> But see, that's what I got there. I've been there now several times. Right. My books are be air in Russian, and they're being more and more being translated. There. Right. So I have to go and lecture there. And the first time I went a few years ago, I said, 
what's going on here? This is not at all what our government told us it was. Really? That it's propaganda. These are what <laughs> people. So they're driving modern cars. They're they're dressed fine. They have their stores are full of uh, groceries. They have malls that are just like any mall in the United States. And where did they get the idea that these people were starving? Well, how do the people feel? I mean, when you meet the people, how do they feel? How do they look? How is their energetic state? Is it positive, happy, bright? To me, there was. I mean, I had a wonderful experience. Wow. See, and, I um, love to hear that. Everywhere I go, I have found that. That I keep saying it's all propaganda. It's all propaganda owned by a few globalists that have uh, really not very good designs in mind. Well, you know what I always tell my kids? I say, the news you get in the United States is not the real news. Yeah. In fact, you're the people that they've actually played like a harp. They've told you you're the freest for the longest, yet they've spun you like a... Uh, a, a top the longest so the polarity and the duality is really deep and rich <laughs> right here in america well see when i go to get to europe places like that i just come back from australia right oh uh, you hear the news over there and they talk about things happening in the states sure. well i come back here and i ask my kids did you hear about this and this they said no there wasn't a word about it you get the real news when you travel out of the country. Yes, that's what I hear, too. And, and that's, yeah. Not at all what they're trying to tell us here. And soon they're going to sew up the local markets, and they're going to do it regardless of what you or anybody else says. And they proved that fact at their open meeting, which they only held a couple of days in advance of the public hearing on it, which was the consolidation in local markets. But, of course... Really, folks, that's because the Internet's kicking their butt. And the people on the Internet know they can be wrapping this media into one full circuit that brings it back to the people. And they don't like that. That scares them. So, and, and interestingly enough, I'll add a little, I'll add a little cancer to the situation. <laughs> Old Mitt Romney, pretty boy Mitt. He's, uh, oh boy, I gotta tell you, I guess one of his private Firms, from what the news is, I've been reading is looking to buy Clear Channel. Looking to buy Clear Channel for billions. Uh huh. Um, amazing. I got to tell you, that's a riot. Mm. Isn't that interesting? So what does that mean? Me, of course, I'm a Ron Paul lover. I love the man. I love the man. I love the man. I could say that in a monologue for an hour. Yeah. Because I love that man. But. You know, there's other designs out there that are going to p try to pull some interesting media uh, skirmishes on the people, and I hope people are wary of it. I, I really do. Uh, if they've been listening to BBS Radio, they're probably pretty wary of it by now, but it's going to get even more chaotic, I think, in the news, because they actually believe they've got people convinced they're the real deal. Huh. <laughs> Well, it's all propaganda. It's like, it is. Are you going to believe it or not? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, one thing I've noticed when I travel anywhere, people are just people everywhere you go. They, they I don't have any trouble with anybody. That's I right. found people are more concerned with their families, their jobs. All they want to do is make a living and support their families. They don't care about wars. They don't care about political stuff. All the stuff you see on TV, that's not the people in their natural state. It's, you know, uh, we're the one, the, gov the leaders are the ones that make the wars. The people don't have any desire for that. I said, if more people traveled, there wouldn't be any wars. Sure. Well, they're trying to indoctrinate you into their own belief system. You'd and that's what'll keep it, their belief system alive and keep you in it. You'd see that everybody is the same. Sure. If you, more people did travel. I agree. This is a con job. It's a snow job. Folks, by people with too much money and, and not, maybe not enough heart at this particular time. But uh, it's a snow job. Yeah, but that's, <laughs> that's what they have, they, you know, I'm talking about, have said, to look beyond all of this. So think for yourself and don't get sucked down. Sure, get a million points of view, a million points of light, you know. Don't, don't just get one perception. You'll get a few, few, maybe one perception on all the media or spun a different way, but... Yeah, go look for a lot of perceptions if you can't gain a healthy one. Yeah, ask a lot of questions before you make up your mind. Yeah. It's Try an information age after all. I mean, 
we, we're well suited to it. We're well adapted to it. Our bigger hearts can really work with more information because we're heartfelt. Mm-hmm. Well, see, I'm supposed to go to China next year because my books are over there now. Oh, wow, you're key. Dolores, you're an amazing woman. <laughs> well, I've had people say, aren't you afraid? Are you afraid to go over there? And I said, well, no, everywhere I go, I'm, I'm protected, I'm taken care of. But they say, you mean they are interested in metaphysics? And I said, they tell me the books are selling. You know, I bet you, uh, you considering Japan and the way those people are so open about extraterrestrial uh, energies and the presence here and how open the society is about it. I almost have my thoughts, and it's a lot like the Earth sister um, uh, stated, that it could be that first open contact will be made with that country in particular. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, those people are open to it. Many countries are now open to it. You can see them if you want to. If it's not going to scare you and you really want to meditate, do a, do a meditation for a week. Try to connect up, up with them and then go outside in a quiet time and pour your heart out. Well, see, you might like be surprised. Right. I mean, I was. I, I, I tell lots of people to do it, and all of them get some form sooner or later of what they're looking for. These, these entities, most of them are really here to love you, to help the earth go through. It's a big process, folks. You think it's easy moving this much energy around because it's only energy. Yeah, and I don't get the negative. You know, my work is all in the positive. Sure. But even when I went to Russia, I had somebody ask me the other day, are they into this? I said, they are so far ahead of us, you wouldn't believe it. Oh, yeah. They love it. They haven't they've been for years. My publisher over there, Sophia Publishers, published 30 titles a month in metaphysics. Oh, yeah. And they're, in, they're very big into the health market and into, yeah. the, into the healthy type products, uh, customer care products and things. I mean, if they're – really, they are on the cutting edge of new sciences, new technologies, uh, a healthier way of living – um, a brighter way of thinking. So, you know, these, the negativity they try to promote is just it's coming from the government because sure. I haven't found that at all. No, I agree. It's, it's, it's really coming from a few people that are really controlling our governments, controlling the money supplies of the governments. And, um, again, they're nefarious at this point. It's a shame. I wish they'd change their tune. Well, I guess they enjoy... You know, putting fear into people, not realizing it's going to backfire on them eventually. Yeah, I don't even know if they even get any joy anymore. I, 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 it would be hard to say that what, I don't know, maybe they get momentary happiness. Happiness and joy to me are two different things. They might be seeking that momentary happiness, but it really leads to em- emptiness. Yeah. Well, you know, one thing I do talk about sometimes, too, is creating your own reality. We were talking about how powerful the mind is because you can create your own reality. You do. You create it all the time. Everything you have in your life, you have put there. You put there, agreed to have there. Either consciously or unconsciously. (laughs) That's right. Some people don't like it when I say that because their lives aren't very happy. But I said, if you realize you have created everything around you in your life, then you can uncreate it if you don't like it. Sure. You know, when I got, when I actually was at my highest peak of fear, and my fear is always not able to help enough people. That's always been my fear. So when I get it, when I was, like when I get to the point or have where you just feel destitute, where you think, gee, you know, people got to, we really got to reach more people and we got to do it quickly. Yeah. Um, and when you don't feel you're succeeding sometimes, that's when I sometimes feel that time. And at those moments of greatest amount of fear, let's call it, or angst or negative emotions, I find to just totally stop what you're doing, get down upon your knees and don't pray, just give it all love. Really give it a lot of love. Just say, okay, I love this situation. Love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, that's what I... Th- Sometimes I'll think that. Am sure. I, am I doing any good? <laughs> so then the book keeps being... Well, it's always a, it's always a lesson. Everything That's the is. beauty of it. So if you really bring it down to the lessons of love, you'll learn. 
Yeah. But see, that's why, you know, I start thinking, am I doing anything? I think all of us get to those points where we that do. we get depressed. And, we do. But then the books are being translated into more and more languages. I'm reaching more and more people. Where do they get your books? I mean, they're like your children, and they've gone out and created lives of their own. Well, what are the titles of the books, and where where could somebody get all those books that you've written? Where can they get them? Yeah, you know where where you've written, where you know all the fourteen books that you've written. Yeah. Is there any place like listing all those books and and the titles and little description? Yeah. Yeah, well, they're they're available in all the stores and everything. But people say they go in the stores, they may see one or two, right? And they don't know. They can ask the clerk to look it up on the computer because they have to know the names, right? Some of the clerks usually are teenage kids, and they don't want to do it because it's too much work. But yeah, they can go on my website, my company's website, and I, all of my books are on there. Ozark. And one of them has gone out of print. Amazing. I saw Amazing. it on Amazon now. They're selling it for $150 used copy. <laughs> <laughs> they know as soon as it goes out of print, then the price goes up. But, yeah, if they go on my website, you know, and my company is Ozark Mountain Publishing. And, you know, it isn't just my books. I've got, about 20 other authors, and I've got five more books that are coming out before the end of the year by other authors. So I am publishing all kinds of metaphysical and spiritual type books. But if you go on my website, there's a list of everything on there. And right now we've got the specials going on, Christmas specials, and we have a pre-publication special on my new book, The Convoluted Universe Book 3. You can get it at a cheaper price before it comes out. So if you go on my website, it's www.ozarkmountain. But that's abbreviated. O Z A R K M T dot com. Or if you're in Europe or in Australia, it's O Z A R K M T dot com. Everything is on our website. And then if you want to go to the store, if you don't want to order direct from us, you can ask the store for certain titles or you can go on Amazon. They're everywhere. I have distribution all over the world. Well, you know, Dolores, you're such a beautiful lady. You've been with us for so long. You bring such a strong and profound energy, and it and it touches my heart. You you really do, you've added such a powerful energy to our soul net here at BBS Radio. Let's call it. I like to call it that. I haven't heard that uh, before, and it seems to be what we're growing into. And I just love it. I love having you with us. And it's an amazing that you're that you've written so much about the way things work according to how you feel. And, you know, from listening to many of your shows, I think not only are you well-traveled, very knowledgeable, but I think you're getting very accurate spiritual information. Well, and that amazes me, Dolores. Um, you're an amazing woman. <laughs> But every day, night I'm going to do the show, I'm sitting here worrying, what am I going to talk about tonight? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I have guests a lot, but I've had people when I've been traveling and they say, we just want to hear you talk. We don't care if you have a guest or not. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to run out of stuff to talk about after a while. <laughs> oh, boy. But uh, anyway, getting back to you, uh, you started, when did you uh, first go on, uh, well, I guess you say your dream or anything, but when did you first start the uh, the station, the BBS radio? Well, let's see. Um, blog and service really was an idea that came about um, in December, I think, of, was it 2004? And I think in March of 2005 or something like that, yeah. uh, I think we started rolling with blog and service. Um, and then we, at the end of that year, we switched over to BBS Radio uh, two and a half years ago or something. We changed I came, it. From, I came on board in September of that year. And right. You, you said you hadn't been on very long. Right. We started airing live broadcasts in 2005. Uh huh. And well, maybe I was one of your first ones. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, were. This was your dream. This was your baby. It, you know, it. I don't know. I just 
it was never really a dream, honest. I, you know, I can't say that. I, ne- I didn't even know what it was. But you I, had to create it. You had to have a seed. Something. You know, I just had felt a passion and an urgency to spread love. And I felt that this was the best medium to do it. And I just wanted to give it wings. I prayed that spirit would give this thing wings. Just give it wings. Let it be a butterfly in your hands. I'll yeah. be a part of it, and let's see what happens. I'm all for it, and that's my attitude with it. Well, see, you've had your down times. I have, too. Oh, yes. And I think the main thing is that we persist and go through those, because that's where the lessons are. I agree. Uh, you know, it's, it's, there is no such thing as failure. I tell people... If you fail, you'll never know if you... I mean, if you're afraid of failing, you'll never try. And yeah. if you quit, you'll never know if you could have made it. Sure. That's you have to go and... It, it's and if you, you try, make. you always make it. You have to believe in yourself and what it is that you want to accomplish. That's right. If you well, might not try on the first shot, but keep trying. You'll get there. It don't matter what anybody else says, because they're always going to talk you down, or you can't do it and all of that. Is if you believe in it, sooner or later somebody else is going to believe in you, and it will go. Exactly. But exactly. It's not easy. That's what happens to a lot of these movie stars and things. They get things too fast and too easy, and they fall apart. They do because there is responsibility. As you as you gain greater awareness and you're working with many more people, there's a there's a greater responsibility to affecting more lives in a stronger way. It's, it's the responsibility of love. I keep saying it. It has a very profound responsibility to its flavor. Yeah. Because it's ultimately everything. But I think you have done a wonderful job because you had a lot of odds against you. You had a lot of uh, down times. And you stuck in there, and it is growing. I, you know, we're growing by leaps and bounds. We're having a lot of attacks. We're having people do things that are less than uh, heartfelt. They, uh, maybe they, you know, they don't have integrity in those actions. And it's okay. We love them, too. We really do. Yeah. And eventually, if you feel our energy long enough, maybe you'll come by for a hug. Maybe our energies can hug you, because we do love you. We wish you the best. Yeah. And we don't want to hurt you. But I don't think you have anyone on your programs that are in the negative, do you? I do. I believe that all the hosts, even though they may not agree with each other, they truly, profoundly believe that they're being of the highest service they can be. Yeah, they, everybody has to believe in what they're yeah. doing, or they yeah. wouldn't be doing it. Yeah. So I, you know, they might be. I might be in disagreements with them, but then I don't judge their messages. I just try to feel what they're doing, and I let, you know, if they truly believe they're being of that high service, unless they prove themselves wrong. I mean, I go by my heart. Well, over the years, you know, I've been doing this now for, uh, well, I've been a hypnotist for 30 years, but I've been doing this over 20 years with the books, and they've tried to get me on TV shows and lectures where they want me to debate someone. Sure, yeah. Tear their work down. <laughs> and I said, I won't do that, because yeah. that is their work. It's what they believe in. I agree and with you. I respect that. It's I may not agree with it, but I respect that it's their viewpoint, and I'm not going to argue with them or try exactly. to tear it down. And I think that's the way it should be anyway. Yeah, we're all playing witness to each other, folks. You know, we, and we can stand as witness to each other, too, and in love. Oh, uh-huh. I, you know, Dolores, we're two and a half minutes over. <laughs> I know. I, I'm sorry, I wasn't even I'm watching. I'm the clock. I always have a clock right in front of me. Oh, well, I'll let you. Dolores, i got to tell you, it is an honor to be on your program. <laughs> it, 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 it really, truly is. And I, it gladdens my heart when I think of you. Always has, and I'm sure it always will. I love you. You call it my program. It's your station. <laughs> it's would, our creation. I wouldn't be here without you. <laughs> but, yeah, the hour just sped by. Well, thank you. Thank okay, you. Okay, and thanks for being on here. And uh, that other caller was really uh, an added uh, you know, bonus to the show. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, then, I'll see everybody next week. I'm home for a while. I don't go anywhere until February. So, everybody have a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Dolores. Thank you. Blessings to you.
and good night, everybody. If you enjoyed the show, check out more of our other videos and be sure to subscribe and click the like button. Thank you for listening to the Metaphysical Hour with Dolores Cannon.